I rushed to change out of my pajamas and hurried back to the comfy room. There, Luke was scowling as he approached Joker. Stop avoiding the question, Joker! That's not a good enough answer! Boy, oh boy. You really are stubborn, Hatter. Uh, wait a minute, both of you! I pushed my way between Joker and Luke as they faced off against each other. <laughs> Luke heeded my call and now begrudgingly sat on the sofa. Calm down a little, will you? Hey, Luke. You drink tea, right? Hold on a sec. For some reason, Joker made himself at home in the kitchen. This was Alice's house, which meant that it was pretty much my house. What about you, Amelie? There's coffee, tea, or I can squeeze some of the fruit we had yesterday if you'd like juice. Okay. I'll take some juice, please. Coming right up. He gave me a light-hearted response and immediately set to work. He served tea for Luke and juice for me. This was accompanied by an impressive breakfast. Bacon and eggs on toast. The piping hot bread was crispy with just the right amount of salt. The tomato salad topped with grated cheese was succulent and refreshing. <sighs> I picked up my glass and took a sip of the juice. It's delicious. Thanks, Joker. You're welcome. So... Luke waited for my breakfast to arrive before he started to speak. What are you doing here, Joker? Weren't you watching? I was preparing Amelie's breakfast and getting ready to serve you. That's not what I mean. Luke shot back at Joker, drawing his eyebrows together in apparent disapproval. You barge into Alice's house, this early in the morning, and act overly friendly. Luke appeared to be angry. I supposed pointing out that Luke had spent the night would only add fuel to the fire. Well, what kind of relationship would meet with your approval? Let me just say, I was the one who carried Amelie to bed last night. What? Why couldn't he keep his mouth shut? As anticipated, Luke's face turned red as he glared at Joker. Joker seemed unfazed by his reaction and grinned in amusement. Hold on, Joker. I sensed that leaving the conversation to Joker would only make matters worse. You can be quiet for now. I'll do the talking. I then turned to Luke. Joker is my friend. It's true that he carried me to bed, but it's not like we're lovers. When I spoke of my relationship with Joker, his eyes narrowed in surprise. Anomaly. Are we friends? Oh, didn't you know? When you gaze at the starry night together, or stay up all night talking. Ordinary people wouldn't consider doing that with a stranger. Heh. <laughs> Leave it to you to know something like that, Amelie. Even without your memory, you have a lot of common sense. <laughs> Joker sounded impressed, and we exchanged smiles. We were dancing on a fine line between joking and sarcasm, but it was in no way uncomfortable. You two seem to be getting along awfully well. Luke sounded surprised as he watched our interaction. Luke settled his jade-colored eyes on me and started to speak. Homily, I'm sorry about yesterday. When you suddenly disappeared from in front of me, I was so worried and I, I quickly set out to search for you. But I couldn't find you. Why? There's no reason for you to apologize, Luke. I widen my eyes in surprise. If anything, I'm the one who needs to apologize for causing you worry by suddenly disappearing. Luke kept looking for me because he was worried. No, that was because someone used magic to forcibly teleport you far away. I still have no idea why anyone would do such a thing. Hearing the question in Luke's voice, Joker shrugged his shoulders. Well, I can't think of anyone who'd use the teleportation spell just to be spiteful. Really? Yeah. The teleportation spell is particularly draining. With the exception of powerful magicians, it's rarely used. At that point in the conversation, there was another knock at the door. Ah, uh, I'll get that. Joker stood up, even as he spoke. Huh? But... My immediate thought was... This is my house, or Alice's at least. 
It's okay. You just worry about finishing the rest of your breakfast. You want to walk around again today, don't you? Eat. Alright, I will. I nodded and bit into the rest of my toast, downing it with juice. Several seconds later, something small, white, and fluffy flew in from the door Joker opened. Not something, but rather someone to be precise. Because that something fluffy started speaking in a high-pitched voice. Hello, Alice. I'm Al, the White Rabbit. H Hello. Uh, the White Rabbit is right. I found myself nodding as I took in the white, fluffy fur. But are rabbits supposed to talk? I had a hard time accepting the sight that greeted me, and I subconsciously tilted my head. The Queen of Hearts has summoned you, Alice. Will you come with me to the castle? The Queen? That sounds intriguing. I'll go too. Joker seemed interested and announced his intention to accompany me before I could even respond. Wait, Joker, that's... Just when Luke attempted to voice his objection, the pocket watch he was holding started to sound. It's this time already? As Luke turned off the alarm, his face took on a regretful expression. I wish I could go with you, but I need to host the tea party. That's an unbreakable rule. A rule? I'm sorry. If you'll excuse me. Luke stood from the sofa and hurriedly exited the house. I tilted my head as I watched his retreating form. I wonder why Luke even came. Was it just to apologize about yesterday? First of all, why was he so upset to find Joker at my house? I had so many unresolved questions, but Luke took all the answers with him. Who knows? Joker narrowed his eyes and spoke as if it didn't concern him. Maybe he's also a fan of yours. What do you mean by also? Kyle and Dean Delmer are all fans of yours. What about you, Joker? Isn't it obvious? Joker spoke teasingly as he winked at me. I'm a fan of Amelie. I held my tongue as my jaw tightened. I didn't appreciate his sarcasm, even if it was meant as a joke. The fact that I almost laughed probably meant that I was becoming accustomed to his teasing. Or it could be the fact that Joker called me Amelie and not Alice. Make me slightly giddy. Of course, it's probably the former. I've grown accustomed to it. That must be it. And so, after I finished my breakfast, I got ready to go. I followed Al as he led me to the Castle of Heart, where the Queen of Hearts was supposedly expecting me. She wanted to see me. I couldn't think of any reason to refuse. So, Amelie, have you had any trouble since arriving in Wonderland? How was Alice's house? Is it comfortable? The Queen of Hearts spoke to me in a gentle voice. She wore an impressive red dress adorned with hearts, and her eyes were hidden behind a lace veil. I couldn't read her expression, but after talking to her for a while, I sensed that she was a warm, caring woman. Not at all what I expected of a queen. Despite inviting me here as Alice, she in no way made me feel inferior. Instead, when I told her my name was Amelie, that was what she proceeded to call me. I appreciate your concern, your highness. For the moment, I haven't had any major problems. <laughs>